So let's add that if they're blind, it's a tragic situation here. And we'll up this over and say that uh, they're blind. So now I'm going to go, okay, forms. I like to start at the 1040 just to because it's easier for me to see. I'm more used to it. And so I can say, okay, now two boxes are checked. Uh, you were born before uh, 19, January 2nd, 1958 and are blind. So now the deduction is gone up to 16,450. So if I was on my Excel worksheet, I'd say, okay, now there's two of these <clears throat> that were increased to the 16,450 to get us to the taxable uh, income, income of the 83,550. So there's the 83,550, which of course you can see on the form 1040 SR uh, as well. So there's the, the single status and we're gonna say on page two, there's the 16,450, there's the taxable income 83,550. Now, if we had a married couple, I'm just to see another combination because there's more combos. If they're married and they're both over 65 and one of them uh, was blind, now I'm gonna say, okay, so so the were born before January 2nd, 19, our blind spouse was born before, but not blind. So now we've got the standard deduction at the 30,100. If I go back on over, I would say, okay, normally it would be the married filing joint, but then I'm gonna add the 1,400 for one spouse plus 1,400 for the other spouse plus 1,400 because one of the spouses were blind. Blind. And that's going to get us to the 30,100, getting us to the taxable income of the 69.9. There's the 69.9. You can see that on the 1040 SR as well. Married filing joint. There's our check boxes, three out of four being checked off on page two. Then we can see the 30,100, the 69 nine uh there 69 nine there and then again if i look at page four now if i was married filing joint there's the thirty thousand one hundred because three out of the four kind of added categories have been checked off both of them over 65 one out of the two blind and just jumping back to the uh, married filing separate status i'll remember that if married filing separate you could have some restrictions so Restriction structure. So for example, if I go back to married filing separate and I scroll down, then typically that would take you back down to the the standard for the single filer, which is the 12,950. But you could imagine a situation where one of the spouses is, is itemizing, in which case you would have to force the itemizing of this spouse possibly for married filing separate. And that of course can have a, a big impact on on the taxes when you're thinking about what someone can do married filing joint versus a married filing separate so remember that when you get into the weeds of a married uh, couple and they're like should we file married filing separate there's kind of a couple questions the one is would it be beneficial from a tax standpoint usually it's not usually married filing joint would be better and then you have other questions that that may lead them to want a married filing joint uh, or separate and then if one is itemizing, that could complicate the situation uh, as well. And if you're living in community property uh, states, that also could be different or is different in terms of the calculation from a non-community property state. So just make sure that uh, you've got, you know, those things kind of straightened out and that, that someone can't really go from married filing joint just back to single. Married filing separate is not the same as single or jumping back to basically like head head of household, there's usually gonna be restrictions to married filing separate that may not be there if you were head of household or single filing status. So those are the general uh, concepts.